Yes, yes, ladies and gentlemen, welcome. You're now listening to episode 12 of The Blueprint. I'm your host, A. Rich, Akeem Richens. If you're not accustomed to the saying by now, even though you should be familiar to the saying by now, but if you don't know me, get to know me. And the first thing I got to do is offer my moment of silence, offer my, my respect to the Texas legend, the Texas running back legend, Cedric Benson, who tragically died in a motorcycle accident. We're talking about a man that played 96 games in the NFL that amassed over 6,000 yards with 32 touchdowns. He is a Texas legend. So I have to pay my respects and give this man a moment of silence. Yes, yes, ladies and gentlemen, I feel that it's necessary to acknowledge tragedies and knowledge other things going on around the NFL I understand this is a, a a Buffalo Bills podcast I understand I get real specific about our team but there are times where it, it, it calls to branch out and it calls to talk about other things other things around the league other events and other and, and tragedies and this is definitely one of them so my respects my condolences to Cedric Benson and his family moving on we dominated the Carolina Panthers, didn't we? Didn't we dominate Carolina from start to finish? We seen the the clip with uh, Munnerlyn and Cam Newton and the Ed Oliver stare when Cam Newton was talking all out the mouth, talking his mouth, running his jibs, come to find out he didn't even play in the damn football game. And honestly, I don't blame him. I really don't blame him. The Buffalo Bills was dominant from start to finish. But I really can't blame Ron Rivera for sitting out his franchise quarterback, Cam Newton. We see what's going on around the NFL. Now, I'm here to say camp OTAs is very important. You have to build that camaraderie. You have to build that chemistry. Uh, a lot of teams have a lot of different players. You have to have to involve these players to get together so they can form and build a potent nucleus. But you have to protect your players. You have to protect your guys. You have an ultimate goal, and that's to attempt to win the Super Bowl. Obviously, all teams are not going to win the damn Super Bowl. But you want to put your best foot forward in trying to reach that feat. And when you see guys like Avery Williamson of the New York Jets go down the inside linebacker. When you see guys like Duran James from uh, L.A. Chargers go down uh, the safety, a big time safety. Uh, he's a big part of what the Chargers want to do and where the Chargers want to go. When you see good to great players go down, it really takes a toll, takes a negative impact on your team, and you now have more of a weakness, because the good old saying is, next man up, that's what players are supposed to say, that's what coaches are supposed to say, next man up, but the reality is, the next man up is not going to be better than that man you lost, so we have to protect our players and I hope our Buffalo Bills guys our Buffalo Bills coaching staff and our brass see what's going on and do their best to protect their players protect our players now granted you have to practice you have to play you have to you have to get in condition we understand while going through conditioning drills and going through practice at times, there are freak accidents. There are freak injuries. Things happen. It's a combative sport. It's an aggressive sport. And we know injuries are going to occur. But we have to try to limit and avoid those injuries when humanly possible. Now, with the Avery Williams situation, I, I can't get on Gase. I can't. I can't question what he did. I'm, I'm on the other side. But me, I, I would be very upset as a Jet fan. Again, injuries happen. Injuries are going to happen. But we're talking about a, a starter that was out there playing with 
10 guys that is coming off the bench. He was the only starter playing with 10 bench guys. In my opinion, that could have been avoided. That definitely could have been avoided. Now, people will say, well, I, we got this narrative. We, have, we built this narrative in the preseason to say the third game is the dress rehearsal. We build this narrative to say the third game we have to treat like a, a real game. Why? Why do we have to treat the third game like a dress rehearsal? We have the first game of the preseason, we get one or two series in. We have the second game of the preseason, we get a couple series in the second game. We have this quote-unquote dress rehearsal game, and we have to uh, get some uh, a series or two in at, at, at best, at most in my opinion. Me playing or wanting to play guys uh, the whole half and well into the third quarter with this narrative, this quote-unquote dress rehearsal, in my opinion, is unnecessary. The main objective is to be as healthy as we possibly can going into week one. There is nothing to prove in the third game that you couldn't prove in the first or second game. The fourth game, we always have our bench guys and the guys that's on the roster bubble trying to make the team play the majority of the game, right? We always have that have that in our in our in our heads. We always see that in the fourth game. We don't really even pay attention to the fourth game cuz our main players are not playing. We're playing at a time now where injuries are on the rise more than ever. We have these big, we have these strong physical specimen. We have these athletes that's more athletic than ever. And we have guys that are going down at a more rapid rate. I, I, we have the doctors, we have, we have uh, better technology nowadays, but we shouldn't even want to go through that. The main objective is to be as healthy as we possibly can. And I want to try. I'm going to put my, my voice out there. Y'all let me know if y'all agree. Y'all let me know if y'all disagree. We have to change the narrative of this third game. Of this so-called dress rehearsal. And how important and imperative it is. The importance is getting healthy and being healthy for week one. Now, as much as I would love to see our first team offense and first team defense uh, play the play the whole half or play well into the third quarter and play against the Detroit Lions and Matt Patricia and Matthew Stafford's first team and second team, I want us to be healthy playing against the New York Jets week one. Let me know how y'all feel. Let me know if you would agree or disagree with. Uh, my sentiment with my take of the situation, but that's just how I feel about it. Uh, moving on, we're doing some great things. We're doing some great things. We did some great things last week. I don't want to go ahead and get overjoyed. It, the Carolina Panthers uh, was running a, a, a vanilla defense. They didn't run that type of defense that the Jets ran against the Atlanta Falcons in the preseason game. Uh, the Carolina Panthers, they was rushing four for the most part. Uh, their guys was trying to get there, trying to beat our guys one-on-one. -on -one. My man Josh Allen, he stood back in the pocket. He had a clean pocket for the most part, and he delivered his, his throws. We like to see it. We want it. We want to see that because we want our guy Josh Allen to be able to deliver the football. We all know that everybody is is going crazy on the negative aspect in terms of Josh Allen's accuracy. We know people are going crazy in the aspect of looking at Josh Allen's completion percentage. So when Josh Allen drops back and he delivers a screen on the money, and it's crazy to say, as basic as a screen is, as basic as a screen is, Josh Allen delivered that screen on the money, and we're happy to see it. We're happy to see Josh Allen deliver the football over the middle to our tight end, Tommy Sweeney. We're ecstatic to see Josh Allen deliver the football with touch, with that touch pass to Tommy Sweeney like he did. 
We we are excited to see all of that because those are the type of things that we did not see last year from Josh Allen. So for us, for us to see that, for us to visibly see that as easy as other teams or other people or other spectators may think those throws are, those throws are not necessarily as easy for Josh Allen. And for him to deliver the football on time with anticipation to scan the field the way he did against the Carolina Panthers was something we loved and we enjoyed viewing. We, we, we enjoyed watching. Now, on the, on the opposite end of the spectrum, getting back to the Carolina Panthers, they didn't run no stunts. They wasn't running no linebacker stunts. They wasn't blitzing no safeties. They wasn't, they wasn't running no uh, defensive line stunts. It was basic and it was vanilla. We're not going to see that simplicity from the New York Jets come week one. We're going to see a team that's going to be blitzing corners. We're going to be see we're going to see a team that's going to be blitzing safeties. That's going to do stunts with their linebackers and their defensive tackles. They're going to do everything and everything, anything and everything to try to confuse Josh Allen. I know that. I understand that, and I notice exactly what's going on. So as much as we love to see Josh Allen and his improvements, he still has a way to go. He still has a way to go in terms of recognizing defenses, recognizing confusing coverages, knowing who's coming, knowing who's not coming. We still have a long way to go. But damn it, it was refreshing. It was refreshing for Josh Allen. It was refreshing for me to see LaShawn McCoy score a touchdown. Yes, his yards per attempt, his yards per carry, it wasn't uh, through the roof. But we saw some elusiveness from, from LaShawn McCoy. We saw TJ Yeldon come and get back on the right track. We seen Ed Oliver push back the defense on a double team. Yes, in a regular game, it's going to be a unnecessary contact. It's going to be unnecessary hands to the face. Ed Oliver, I noticed even in some practices with our team, the Buffalo Bills, he was getting his hands a little bit too high, taking off the helmet. He may get called for a penalty or two before he understands and realizes that, hey, I got to watch my hand usage. But to see him take on a double team, to see him take on a double team and, and push his opponents back and get a hand up on the football and swat it down, it was refreshing to see. To see Kevin Johnson take a pick six, yes, it was, it was thrown directly to him. But a lot of throws uh, is thrown directly to D-backs and they don't grasp the opportunity. You still have to catch a football. You still have to make the play. It was refreshing to see Kevin Johnson catch the football, make the play, and run it back pick six to the house. It's refreshing to see Trent Murphy uh, do a, a spin move one-on-one. -on -one. We're not running no, no, no stunts. We wasn't running no heavy stunts, no heavy blitz packages. It's man up one-on-one, -on -one, my guys against your guys. Let's see who better. Let's see who's better. It was refreshing to see Trent Murphy get off the ball the way he got off the ball and make that sack. It was refreshing to see Daryl Johnson, our seventh round pick, come back in back to back weeks and make plays. We're talking about a seventh round guy. A lot of guys and a lot of people will say, well, he did that against backups. Daryl Johnson is a seventh round draft selection. Seventh round draft selection Selections do not flash the way Daryl Johnson flashed these last couple of weeks. It just, it, it, it doesn't happen. It doesn't happen often. And for us to get a guy that has that potential, for us to get a guy that has that type of, that type of, that type of move, them type of moves, it was definitely refreshing for us to see. And, I love what Tommy Sweeney was able to do. He was able to produce as a seventh round pick, a seventh round tight end. We have Dawson Knox injured. We have Jason Kroon injured. Uh, we have uh, 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 multiple injuries along our tight end, uh, tight ends, tight end corpse. And to see a, a seventh round pick 
come and produce the way Tommy Sweeney has came and produced, it was refreshing to see. Our entire draft class is is playing very well. It, it's not it's, it's very unusual what's happening. Now the season hasn't started yet. The season definitely hasn't started yet. But we usually get guys or teams are usually happy when certain players are playing well, such as a first round pick. Hey, if our first round pick is playing well, if our second round pick is playing well, then he could be a starter. He probably not a pro bowler. If he could be a starter, if our third round guy could be a rotational guy, hey, we had a hell of a draft class. For us to come and and have multiple guys produce, to for us to come and have Cody Ford produce the way he's producing, for us to have Ed Oliver showing the potential that we all think and all know he has, for Tommy Sweeney to come and produce, for. Uh, Daryl Johnson to come and produce, for Devin Singletary to come and produce, for, for Sean Joseph to come and produce on special teams and, sh- and show his physical nature that he's shown in his first game. It is very, very uh, lovely to see. Dawson Knox, he, he hasn't played a game yet. He's nursing his hamstring. But because of our other guys, of our, because of our other rookies, I am very confident In in Dawson Knox's ability. And I have to give praise to Sean McDermott. I have to give praise to Brandon Bean. In in taking the time to find guys. We're talking about not only find guys in the first round. But to find guys as deep as we we found guys in the fifth and seventh rounds. It's, it's It's very exciting for our Buffalo Bills team to see. And now... Because of this, because of the money we was able to to obtain because of the moves Brandon Bean has had made, because of uh, the draft picks that he values, we are able to have a pretty damn good ball, ball club, in my opinion. This is the deepest our Buffalo Bills team has been in quite some time. It's... Obviously, some sort of a drop-off between the first and second unit, obviously, is a reason why the first unit is the first unit and the second unit is the second unit. But the drop-off isn't by much. It isn't by much. We're having the opportunity to see a wave of players come in and produce. Our defensive line is deep. Our defensive line is talented. Mike Love is doing his thing along with Daryl Johnson. Our running backs are deep. Our running backs are talented. T.J. Yeldon came in and performed well after he struggled the first game and fumbled. Christian Wade. Now, what the, what about Christian Wade, man? What a hell of a story Christian Wade is. Now, a lot of people say, hey, Christian Wade, he's a baller. He's going to make the team. I wouldn't go that crazy. It's, it's great to see him perform the way he's performing he's definitely have speed he definitely has physicality to his game but we're talking about a man that's playing his second professional game and it's in the preseason and it's going against guys that he may not if he had the opportunity he may not be seeing in 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 the regular season games nevertheless nevertheless it's an amazing thing that Christian Wade is doing. Do I think he's going to make the team? No, I don't think he's going to make the initial 53-man roster. But I do think this man is practice squad material. I do think this man can be on the practice squad and get better and show a, a good a good showing against our first team defense. I think he can be a, a, a very good and very viable scout running back for our first team. And I think next year, with more experience this year, being that Shady McCoy is an older back and he's on his last year of his contract, being that Frank Frank Gore is is a is an older running back and in his last year his contract and his and his only year in his contract, I think he definitely has an opportunity to do something next year, and he's definitely worth our practice squad stash this year. Shout out Christian Wade and what he's able to do and what he's able to accomplish. I've been getting on USC quarterbacks uh, uh, in my past. (laughs) I've got on USC quarterbacks. I said, listen, USC quarterbacks, uh, I don't think they transition well 
to NFL quarterbacks. Carson Palmer is probably the best guy I've seen in my generation, in my time, uh, as a guy coming from USC, and he's had a decent career. I don't think he's a Hall of Famer, but he's had a good, a pretty good career, Carson Palmer. But we've seen guys come and go from USC. We've seen, uh, excuse me, we've seen guys like Mark Sanchez come and go. We've seen guys like Matt Leinard come and go. We've seen guys uh, play well at USC and attempt to come to the NFL and struggle. And it even happened with Ma Matt Barkley earlier in his career. I don't know what happened with Matt Barkley bet between his time when he was coming off the street before we signed him and to now. But Matt Barkley is, is looking like a very good number two quarterback. He's looking like uh, a guy that's very capable. If God forbid Josh Allen gets hurt, he's very capable of coming in, stepping up, and and winning some ball games for our club. And it's very refreshing to see. I have to. I hate to admit it. Shout out Pierre. <laughs> Shout out my bro Pierre. Shout out the team Buffalo Fanatics. I hate to admit it. Sam Donald. He he looks pretty damn good. And I hate to admit it because he he's in our division, and we're going to have to face this man twice a year for the next decade. And Josh Allen and Sam Donald is going to be compared to each other because of being in the same NFL draft and because of being in the same division, along with Josh Rosen as well. So that's another man that came from USC. I gotta give his I gotta give the props. I gotta give the credit where credit is due. Now he still have to play the season. The games still have to be played, but the the progression is something that cannot be ignored. And uh, I apologize. <laughs> Shout out the USC quarterbacks. And we're going to see if any more future UFC quarterbacks could come in the NFL and, and take heed to the position and do their thing as well. It's been fun. You know, I, 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 gotta, I, gotta, I, gotta, I gotta be real. I gotta give my, my real, my honest and open analysis to every situation. Uh, Next week, we're going to talk about what happens or what happened with the Buffalo Bills and the Detroit Lions. I hope our, our starters can stay healthy. I hope our starters, if, if they have to play, play one series, maybe two series, and get us the hell out of there. The main objective is to be healthy for the season. So I hope so far we're trending in that right direction. Mitch Morse is, is getting healthy. Jason Kroon, Dawson Knox, Spencer Long. We have guys that's getting healthy and trending in the right direction. We just hope it continues moving forward because I don't want any of our guys. It's been unfortunate situations happening around the league, and I don't want our team to be a part of that unfortunate situation. So I hope we stay healthy. Sean McDermott, Brandon Bean, I'm pretty sure they're going to do what they're supposed to do, do what they got to do to make sure our players stay healthy and we can attack this season as healthy as we possibly can be. This is A. Rich, Akeem Richens. You have listened to The Blueprint. Until next time. The podcast you just heard was made using Anchor. Ever thought about making your own podcast? Anchor makes it really easy for anyone to get started. It's a one-stop shop for recording, hosting, and distributing podcasts. Best of all, it's 100% free. Sign up now at anchor.fm slash new. That's anchor.fm slash new to get started.